Welcome to the Airgun Show, brought to you by Airgun World magazine. Now you should be able to find magazine subscription details in the show description. In this week's episode, I'm going to be taking a close look at trigger stick tripod shooting sticks. First up though, I'm hitting the grey squirrels hard again. was a bit of a shock for the uh, onlooking woodpecker there. As you can see, I'm back out on my squirrel control duties and we're off to a good start, which is great news because they've been doing a hell of a lot of damage to the trees here. And also thinning them out at this time of year should also be really beneficial to the birds that are trying to nest in these woods. Um, weather's a bit of an interesting one. It's improving now. We did have a very wet morning. It's brightening up. We're in a nice shady area, so that's, that's keeping me pretty nicely concealed, but I think the warming weather conditions seems to be bringing out a hatch of tiny midges and they are eating us alive. We haven't got any insect repellent, but I'm hoping we can put up with it for another hour or two. Well, that little bird didn't seem to be too bothered by the presence of the squirrel then, which is pretty unusual because they often tend to shy away when there are squirrels present. Now, you've probably noticed that this feeder actually has a lid on the feed tray, so those little birds can't get in and take whole peanuts, so I assume they're just feeding on the crumbs that the squirrels are leaving behind.
Fox App Woodpecker back again and I'm pleased to say that he doesn't appear to have worked out how to open the lid on the feeder yet because when they get a taste for peanuts they can really hit into them which can get expensive. It looks like what he's having to do at the moment is actually sort of tap away through a gap behind the lid of the tray and he's just picking out little scraps which is obviously a lot less costly than him constantly grabbing whole peanuts. Bit of a dangler there. Classic headshot clench up before it dropped, but it was stone dead. It's that typical nervous reaction. Now, you've no doubt noticed that I'm taking these squirrels with headshots, and that's pretty straightforward when you've got an accurate setup like this, sitting really comfortably, shooting off of sticks. Um, the feeder is about 25 meters from the hide. This setup is currently zeroed at 30 meters so I'm just giving these shots a little bit of hold under but it really is just a tiny bit And there's another one. I'm actually going to make that the last one because we're planning to head off and do some rabbit shooting this evening and I want to get there before it gets dark. Now, it's actually been a pretty good session and of course, shooting grey squirrels from a feeding station like this isn't particularly sporting, but it's incredibly effective pest control. And because all of your variables are so controlled, the, the supported gun, the distance to the feeder, you're getting very clean, humane kills and the real secret to succeeding with this kind of method is to get the groundwork right so set up your feeder in the right place keep it topped up offer squirrels the right bait which most of the time in my experience is peanuts and if you get that right the day in the hide like today is usually pretty straightforward now as ever before I'm droned out by a helicopter in the background we will talk you through the kit because I know a lot of you take an interest in, in the gear that I'm using on these outings, but I'm going to move out of the hide because the midges are not only really attacking me, but they're getting nicky as well. So we'll head back towards the car, find somewhere where hopefully the midges are a bit less active and I'll tell you all about the kit. 
Right, so we've managed to run away from the midges for now. We've picked up the squirrels, which are destined for a, a birds of prey centre. And as I said, I'll just quickly talk you through the kit. Now, I suppose the real star of the show for an out outing like this is that feed hopper. Uh, the one I've been using today, I'm, you've seen it before, it's made by Keith Watson from Keith's High Seats. Now, Keith does a hell of a lot of squirrel control himself, as you may well have seen on social media. He's also got amazing practical skills and his feeders are great. It's built like a tank. It's got decent feed capacity, so you're not forever topping it back up. And on top of that, it's also got that little lid on the feed tray, which so far the birds here haven't worked out how to operate that. So that saved me a few pounds. And as I said previously, it's about doing the groundwork and getting the squirrels coming to your feeder. It's also about the hide site. We were spoilt today. We were in a nice shady corner, apart from the fact that the midge is homed in on us. But even with me talking and Nicky moving about a bit with the cameras, we, we had the concealment that we needed. Anyhow, back to the kit. The gun is the Daystate Huntsman Revere Safari Edition. Uh, sub 12 foot pounds, 177 calibre. And what can I say? I absolutely yeah, love this gun and you'll have seen I've been using it a heck of a lot lately. It, it looks terrific. I've shown you before that if you do chip this stock you can literally just touch it up with a pen. Uh, it's got a regulated firing cycle so it is potentially a very accurate air gun. At the moment I've been pairing this one with QYS streamlined pellets, the heavier 9.56 grain version and they really do seem to be extracting optimum accuracy from this air gun. They're, they're really nicely manufactured pellets, amazing weight consistency, and although you can't guarantee that every pellet's gonna work in every air gun, I'd certainly say they're worth giving a try. Um, optics wise, it's the MTC King Cobra, four to, let me check, 16 by 50. I've been using it on 10 times magnification today. It's a really nice optic. Uh, it's got a reticle that isn't too busy, so I've been able to sort of master that pretty quickly. Um, good glass. Obviously, I've had a scope cam on it today, and I, I always say this. Um, sometimes scope cam footage doesn't do a scope justice because you've, you're shooting through additional lenses. The lens on the GoPro is tiny, so you can lose some image quality. So hopefully I've managed to capture some pretty good stuff today. Um, and as ever, the uh, scope's held on with sports match scope mounts, which I have absolute faith in. So that's the kit. We're going to clear off before those midges home in on us again. Keith Watson's feed are doing the absolute business on the grey squirrels again there. Next up, let's take a look at some shooting sticks that will make you a more accurate shooter. Right, I want to talk about shooting sticks today, now, primarily the Primos Trigger Stick Tripod, because it's something I use a lot and I genuinely believe that it makes a significant difference to my shooting. Um, they're distributed in the UK by John Rothery Wholesale. I've got two versions here today and we will take a look at them both in turn. Now the key thing about these tripods is that they provide an adjustable means of gun support that is easy to carry in the field. You can use them from a variety of stances and because the extra stability that they give helps to eliminate those inevitable wobbles from your body, 
they really should bring a noticeable improvement to the accuracy of your shooting. Okay, so first up, we have got the Gen 3 tool model, which you will have seen me using a lot when I'm out hunting. In its collapsed state, it measures just over a meter long and it weighs less than 1.4 kilos. Now I use this one a lot for static shooting, whether it's from a hide or ratting, but those proportions mean that it's also not too bulky to carry around on roving sessions. The prime feature is the trigger from which these sticks take their name. Now, if you give it a squeeze, the legs actually telescope in and out to adjust their height. And when you release that trigger, they lock securely in position. Now that gives you a stable shooting platform up to 160 centimeters high for standing shots. The mechanism is near silent and they can go as low as 60 centimeters. So they're also brilliant for sitting and kneeling shots. Now they also feature a really clever locking mechanism that prevents the legs from splaying out on slippery surfaces. Now, this is a feature that I find to be a real asset when setting up on wet or smooth concrete around the farm when I'm out ratting. Finished in subtle colors that blend in well with the countryside, the top section can rotate through 360 degrees so you can cover all of those angles when you're out shooting. Now, it also incorporates uh, a yoke that has a soft rubber inner to cradle your gun stock. Now, there's a quick release mechanism so you can quickly remove that gun rest and swap it out for an attachment, either for a camera or for a spotting scope. Other features include a contoured rubberized handle for a comfortable grip and rubber feet that give a secure purchase on virtually any surface. Now, this particular model has a recommended retail price of £179.95 and bearing in mind that my original set of trigger sticks is still going strong after what must be about eight years, I reckon that is pretty good value for money. If you're on a tighter budget, there is now the option of the trigger stick vital model, which has a recommended retail price of £119.95. Now, at 1.2 kilos, this simplified version is actually lighter than the Gen 3, and it's also a tiny bit shorter in its packed down state. Most significantly, the Trigger Stick Vital has the same trigger operated near silent height adjustment system. Now, at minimum height, it is 57 centimeters from the ground to the gun rest, and that extends right up to 157 centimeters. Like the Gen 3, it is incredibly versatile and pro provides gun support from most of the stances you're likely to use out in the field. The gun rest has a similar soft rubber inner and also rotates through 360 degrees, so you've got all angles covered. Um, it's also got those same rubber feet. It is incredibly easy to operate and very, very stealthy. You can probably tell that I'm a big fan of Primos trigger sticks, and if you've seen my hunting videos, you should have seen just how effective they are. As I said at the outset, they really do bring a noticeable boost to your accuracy, which in turn makes for humane hunting and puts more in the bag. They aren't just for live quarry shooting though, and I know plenty of shooters that use them shooting in the garden and on the range. So do give them a try if you haven't already. I'm afraid that's all we have time for in this week's episode, but as ever, I'll be back again with more in two weeks. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, do check out the subscription offer that we have for Airgun World magazine. There should be a link to that in the show description. While you're there, also sign up for the Airgun World newsletter, which will keep you bang up to date with everything that we're up to. 
Finally, if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun membership. As I said, I'm back with more in a fortnight. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe. BASC provides for me as a member one voice. It's the one organisation that does it all for me. BASC is, is community. We are BASC. We are BASC. We are BASC.